Hi, and welcome to tonight's episode of Ask Leah. Tonight's question is a cracker. It comes from someone who is after advice on how to respond to a chronic complainer at work. And I think this is probably a situation most of us have found ourselves in before, where we've got a colleague, and in this case, it is someone who's a work friend as well, who is constantly complaining, whinging, bitching about the same thing. And it is a real challenge that this person is facing, but they're kind of on that repetitive loop where they're bitching about it every day. And this person reached out to me. They said, I want to retain a great relationship with this person, but I can't keep getting drawn into these negative conversations because it's having an impact on me and it's making me feel crap and I want to be able to extract myself from them, but in a way that... Uh, is respectful and retains the relationship as much as as possible. Two key points uh, before I jump into the five strategies I'm going to share with you on this. Those points are these. If this person is really in victim mode, and it sounds like they are, sometimes the temptation can be for you to jump in as rescuer to try to save the day. And let me tell you, that really rarely works. You can make some suggestions to try to help this person, but trying to sweep in and save the day uh, is probably not going to be useful. And you're better setting some clear boundaries for yourself about the sort of conversations you can have. The second point, because the person said to me, you know, and I, I don't want to damage my relationship with this person. The reality is, You can't control how the other person takes this conversation. I'm going to share strategies to have it in the most effective way possible, but the reality is the other person still might crack the poos and not like you raising this at all. And you do have to be prepared for that. You have to go in with your eyes wide open. And when I said this to the person who asked the question, they responded by saying, oh, maybe I'm better just not to raise it at all. But as I said to them, if you do nothing here, then the problem just continues and it just exacerbates and it impacts your mental health. You're feeling like rubbish. It's impacting your work as well. And even if you're not instigating it, even if you're not contributing a lot to this conversation, if you're in it and then it comes out that all this bitching is going on and it almost always comes out, you're going down too. It doesn't matter that you're not instigating it. So the person realized they really do need to say something. And here's some strategies on how to do that well. Number one, empathize. Now, as I've spoken about before, empathy is not about agreeing with the other person, but it is allowing them to feel seen and heard because you're acknowledging their feelings. So you might say something like, I can see that you are really frustrated now and I get it. We've, you know, this has been an issue for a really long time. So you're acknowledging their feelings. That's that compassion piece, the empathy piece, which means they are more likely to say, to take what you say uh, better. Number two, let them know you are happy to talk and to listen to them. But what you're not willing to do is keep having this uh, repetitive conversation and the reason that you're not, so that's your boundary there. The reason that you're not prepared to have it is number three, because this is actually having an impact uh, on you. You know, when we talk about this every day, I've really noticed it is impacting my mood at work. I'm feeling really negative when I engage in conversations about this. And, you know, I know that talking about it all the time isn't changing anything and so I know that I need to stop talking about it all of the time because that's how I'm going to protect my mental health here. So it's not putting it on the other person, it's not blaming them for it, it's you just owning uh, what you need to do for you in a really, uh, again, respectful, empathetic way. Number four. You might ask them a question such as, okay, we've talked about this a lot lately. What would you like to see happen? 
what would you know do you have any ideas or suggestions on how we could address this and try to shift them gently into solution mode and if they go oh well I can't do anything maybe use those circles of influence that I've spoken to a lot of you about before what can I control what can I influence uh, it might be okay well we can't control the outcome but perhaps we can influence this perhaps that great idea that you've got we can take that to the boss and have the conversation and that's point five suggest that they have the conversation with the person involved directly because if we we can keep having the conversation but I'm not the person who can act on this you know have you thought about raising it with them directly and they might say oh but they're not going to do anything about it well they might not, but we won't know until you try. So again, just to recap, point one, empathize. I can see you're frustrated or whatever it might be. Number two, set your boundaries. So I'm really happy to talk about the issue and to listen if we're focused on, you know, solving it or how we could do things differently, but I'm not willing to have or I can't have uh, that repetitive conversation about this every day anymore because it's having point three a really negative impact on me I know I can feel my energy just dropping and I know it's impacting my mood which then impacts my work so I know for me I need to put a bit of a line in the sand and stop uh, talking about this one all the time point four what could we do differently you know is there an idea here is there a solution uh, and then point five how about you raise it with them directly? And if you feel like you've got the skills, you might coach them on how to do that or make a suggestion. You know, is there a one-on-one -on -one coming up or maybe uh, at a meeting or could you provide some feedback somewhere? Uh, make those suggestions. But again, don't try to solve it for them. Don't be attached to whether they act on it. You're just doing what you can to set your boundary in a helpful, respectful way. If they act on it or not is on them. Now, they might get a bit hump. Uh, grumpy or huffy at you right now uh, but it's about being compassionate but firm now if this is a conversation with a chronic complainer that you've had for a long time chances are just this one conversation that you're having to set the boundary is not going to be the last of it they probably will raise it again tomorrow just to test did you just get brave yesterday and you will engage in it again and this is where it's really uh, important to be a bit of a broken record. You've got to stand firm. Again, repeat those five steps. You know, like I said to you yesterday, I get you frustrated. I'm happy to talk and listen, but I can't have that repetitive conversation. It really does have a negative impact on me. Happy to talk through possible solutions or how you might raise it with them direct. But otherwise, you know, let's talk about something else and stand firm there. If they're a real chronic complainer, they'll probably go find someone else to complain to, but at least it won't be you. And maybe, just maybe, uh, you taking that action for yourself might prompt this person to go, actually, you know what, this is having a crap impact on me too, and I'm going to follow suit. Good luck. Like I said at the start, this is a common one. I really look forward to hearing how you go. And if anyone else watching has a communication or soft skill question you'd like answered, please send it through. I'm always so happy to respond and I hope you have a wonderful week. Cheers.